Lord, we thank you, we praise you. Indeed, you are God Almighty. Thank you, Lord, for your servants, your daughters, your ministers that have come here to learn of your word. Lord, indeed, your word is life. It is the substance of Father that our faith continues to grow. Lord, your word says of Father, Lord, not by might, yeah, it's only by your Spirit, of God. May your Spirit come and help us to understand your word this afternoon, this day, O oh God. Father, we know that, Lord, um, your word is so rich and we need the leading of the Holy Spirit to understand your word, O oh God. We ask all this in Jesus' precious name. Amen. Hallelujah. All right, so let's start. Genesis 27, verse 31, where Isaac suddenly realized that he made a mistake. <coughs> yeah, when he blessed the younger son, yeah, rather than the oldest son. So that was Isaac's reaction. He thought he made a mistake. Yeah. Isaac was getting old. His eyes were dim. And uh, in this passage, the Lord did mention his eyes were dim. Not once. Yeah. But more than once. So it is a spiritual condition that he was not be able to see clearly. Yeah. His discernment his discernment was declining. Yeah, and uh, he used fleshy ways to understand yeah, things. Yeah. Even when he heard the voice of Jacob, he recognized the, the voice of Jacob, but because of his lack of discernment, his flesh kicked in, he says, No, this is Jacob. Sorry, this is Esau. Yeah, though the, his, the Bible says that though his voice was like Jacob's, right? He felt, he used his hands, his senses, his fleshly senses to feel, and he felt, yeah, the hair, the, the, the goat's hair on the shoulders and on the hands of Jacob. And he believed. So many times, okay, we Christians, walk not by faith but by sight and we know that our sight is short-sighted we doubt God his word making a path for us yeah we will not walk brightly we will not be able to walk valently we will not be able to walk courageously as we know Sheep are short-sighted. We, like sheep, are all short-sighted. It is no similarity of us being short-sighted as sheep because we need the shepherd's guidance. We need his light and we need his word. Yeah. No matter how we want to see afar, we can't. Because we are always short-sighted. If we were to be long-sighted, we will always, always want to be better than God. Which we can't. But the problem is, we always want to be God. We always try to be better than God. So we see here today, in the Christian circles, people are trying to be God. They are trying to make themselves gods by pulling people into understanding whom God is. But it is a fallacy, it is an illusion that God is not what they perceived and God is not how they want people to perceive. It is a fallacy. It is a illusion. Right? And I would say, right, it is a dis distort, a lie. 
Remember, brothers and sisters, we can't see far. God will show us step by step along the way. I remember uh, there was a time I was praying to God yeah, and God showed me in a vision yeah, that he will, tr- he will leave a trail like a treasure hunt that He will reveal things as I begin to walk the path and I begin to read the messages left on the path. It is true for you and I, brothers and sisters in Christ. Do not follow the voice of men, but follow the voice of God, which is in you, indwelling in you. The Spirit groans. The Spirit shouts out, Listen, hear me. Hear me out. Do not, do not cloud your senses. Do not cloud your spirit with the voices of men. Be still and listen. I am leading the way. We, like sheep, have all turned away. Even today, even as we have known God, but we begin to turn away because of the foolishness and the deception of our thinking, short-term thinking. We are thinking, okay, that this is what God wants us to be. This is what God wants us to do. That these are the blessings here. God's blessing comes in different forms that we don't see. It comes when there is peril. It comes when there is calamity. It comes like in the story of Isaac, that there was a famine. And in that famine, God blessed him. So, following from what we understand about leaning to our own understanding, and here we see that even one chosen by God also has begun to trail off and gone into the flesh. We see that Isaac himself yeah, has lost his discernment. He doesn't know when God is going to take him away. He doesn't know when to bless or pass the baton over. If you look into the lives of uh, Moses, yeah. God told Moses that Joshua will take over. You look into the lives of Elijah. Yeah. God also prepared Elijah. Even the prophets of Elijah know that Elijah will be taken away. This is all discernment. So what happened to Isaac's discernment? Like I said, do not glory and think that we are always strong. The Bible says that those who think they are strong, right, beware that they fall. Right comes in, it is into us, we think that we are so good that we can't do wrong and we fall. So we see that here is the falling away, not falling away of the faith, all right? Falling away, yeah, from the things of God. And Isaac here makes a blunder, all right? To him, it is a blunder, but to God, God says this is how it is to be. Now ever wondered, okay, when uh, the twins were in the mother's womb, was it that Jacob should come out first and not Esau? But Esau 
was struggling with Jacob and he wanted to be first. And Jacob tried his very best, all right, to, uh, to be first, but he can't. So the story continues that while in the womb, while there was this struggling, the mother of the twins, Rebecca, inquired of God, God, what's happening? And God says that there are two nations in your womb. There are two manners of men. Yeah? So it brings us to our continuation of the story here of Jacob and Esau. Now, many do think, ah, oh, Jacob again deceived Esau. All right, according to what Esau says. Because we are reading in the flesh. Now let's read on here. Yeah? Why we can say that we are reading in the flesh. Alright. Unless it is the God of heavens that opens up the treasures of heaven, we are not able to see. So Genesis 28, alright, we see this. In verse 36, and he said, Is not he rightly named Jacob? So, what does Jacob mean? Jacob means heel. That's all. Jacob means heel. But because we do not walk by faith, we walk by sight. And we see that when Esau was birthed, Jacob was holding on to his heel. And because of his action, yeah, we term him a deceiver. Because he was trying to pull right, his elder brother and he wants to get in front. So like I said, could it be, could it be, yeah, that Jacob should come out first? That still is up for us to think. Now, let's look at the words of Esau, yeah? Now, in the Bible, do not quote people that are ungodly. There are doctrines out there okay that quote things okay in the bible all right that some righteous people do that are ungodly and they say that it's godly all right and uh, we also did a certain last two bible studies yeah that well because abraham deceived abimelech yeah and he received blessings it is good or it is permissible to lie and to deceive there are teachings like that because they take the name of God in vain just because this man is chosen by God doesn't mean all his actions are of God please do remember yeah any man of God today chosen of God does not qualify him yeah, to teach the things not of God. He must teach the things of God and not the things of men. Because the word tells us to the pure all things are pure. To the impure all things are impure. And if you have followed us in the book of Genesis, we have also come across teachings, yeah, that 
Satan, all right, had sex with Eve. Satan had sex with Adam. All these are perverseness of the Holy Word because the thoughts were perverse and impure. Renew our mind, the Bible says. Unless our mind is renewed, when the truth stares at earth, it cannot change us. We need to renew our mind. So here we see that Esau is saying, is he not rightly named Jacob? So this is another fallacy. This is another distortion. Jacob means heal. It does not mean deceiver. For he has supplanted me these two times. He took away my birthright, and behold, now he has taken away my blessing. And he said, Has not thou reserved a blessing for me? Esau was pleading with his father, Isaac. See, he took away my birthright. Behold, now he takes away my blessing. Now, we look into this verse alone, yeah? birthright and blessing. Is there a difference in birthright and blessing? Your blessings come with your birthright. Jacob legally obtained the birthright by a trade despised his birthright. He did not see any value in the birthright, but he saw value in the things of the world. He saw values in the thing of the flesh. And even right now, even he has not come to his senses and repented. He is only seeing others wrong, never seeing his own wrong. And I believe some of you here, okay, do meet people. Yeah. Sometimes we, we, we term them toxic people, yeah. Yeah. They do not see their wrong. Even when they are wrong is revealed to them. Somehow their heart is so hard. Is in penetrable. They can't see they are wrong. They can only see others wrong. And they will, in a way, deny the truth by giving excuses or giving reasons why okay, they are not wrong. Esau here is the same. Esau plainly sold his birthright for that bowl of lentil stew. It is a done deal. So even when his father says, I want to bless you, yeah, he was overjoyed. He had not even repented and says, Father, I'm, I'm really... I got to tell you something. I'm not the legal owner of the birth right now. It belongs to Jacob. But no. You know, he went on. Right? Also according to the father's instructions. Go. You can find me some game, venison, okay, catch it, okay, cook it the way I like it, bring it for me to eat. And he did that. So this thing was overheard by Rebecca. And when Rebecca heard it, somehow, you know, fear did kick in. Now, will uh, Jacob 
be the next to take over or will it be Esau? He remembers the prophecy given by God does Isaac know that? yeah like I said even he does not know God will tell him even as we see how God has prepared Joshua to take over Moses and there's a lot how God prepares people how God prepared Apostle Paul yeah to be an apostle by even using Barnabas to bring him yeah into the apostleship nothing is by chance so we see here that even Esau at this time has not repented and he's still craving after the blessing. He does not understand that the birthright is the blessing. And many times today, Christians still do not understand that you are blessed. You already are blessed by Christ. And you do not need to seek other blessings. Esau is seeking other blessings when he he doesn't know that birthright is the blessing. Do you know that we are blessed because we are Christ? You are blessed because you are the children of God. You have been given that birthright. Though we are adopted sons and daughters. Rightly, we do not have are not Israel. But because of God's predetermined plan, He in His grace and love gladly seeks after us and brings us into the adoption that we may call him Father. It has been prophesied when God called Abraham out. He says that, I will make you a father of nations. Father of nations. Not only father of Israel. Father of nations. We from the foundation of the world, been in the Father's mind all along. The word says that even before you were born, yeah, God already knew you. He loved you from the foundation of the world. So we see that Esau does not know that the birthright is the blessing. He is thinking is okay, I lost the birthright. The birthright is nothing to me. Yeah, I want possessions. I want pleasure. I want recognition. Brothers and sisters in Christ, if we want possessions, if we want recognition, we want pleasure, we are perverse as Esau is perverse. Let's look into book of Hebrews chapter 12, verse 16. Let's look at 15. Looking diligently, lest any man fail of the grace of God. Lest any root of bitterness bringing up trouble you thereby many be defiled, lest there be any fornicator or profane person as Esau, one 
who for a morsel of meat sold his birthright. For you know that afterward, when he would have inherited the blessing, he was rejected, for he found no place of repentance, though he sought it carefully with tears. So we see that, okay, there, there, later on we will see that, okay, Esau began to understand and began to repent. But the birthright is already not his. So, do not be like an Esau. Do not be like a profane person that despised that we are the children of God that we want more than that and we will lie and we will do things ungodly things profane things to acquire these fleshly earthly things that is a profane person many has already despised their birthright misled by many teachers out there. Those who have ears, let him or her hear. The Spirit will speak to you this truth. Let's go back here. Verse 37, And Isaac answered and said unto Esau, Behold, I have made him your Lord, and all his brethren have I given to him. For servants, and with corn and wine have I sustained him. What shall I do with you now, my son? And Esau said unto his father, Hast thou but one blessing? My father, bless me, even me also, O my father. And Esau lifted up his voice and wept. Now this is not tears of repentance. Yeah? It's tears of disappointment. It's cries of disappointment. Still have not repented still have not seen the value of the birthright because he heard what the father said. Yeah? Behold, I have made him your Lord. All your brethren have I given to him for servants. With corn and with wine have I sustained him. Yeah. There was bitterness in his heart yeah? according to what we understand from Hebrews chapter 12. He did not see his own wrong. He is in denial. He's thinking that he yeah, was deceived. But he was deceived by his own deception. He was deceived into thinking that the birthright was not valuable. It was not valuable. And Esau said unto his father, Hast thou one blessing? Bless me, O my father. Esau lifted up his voice and wept. And his father Isaac answered and said unto him, Behold, thy dwelling shall be in the fatness of the earth, and of the dew of the heaven from above, and from thy sword thy shall live, and shall serve thy brother. It shall come to pass, when thou shalt have the dominion, thou shalt break his yoke from off thy neck. So here we see that Isaac now realizes yeah, the birthright yeah, is now rightly Jacob's. Because he himself has blessed Jacob. Even before the father's knowledge of the birthright already been transferred from the elder to the younger. It's already done, you see. Whatever things that will prevail today is already been done in the past. Whatever things that we will walk into is already predetermined, preordained by God. It has been fulfilled even before Jesus Christ died on the cross. The Lamb of God 
has been slain from the foundation of the world. There's nothing the devil can change destiny. There's nothing Satan worshippers can do can change that. Satan worshippers are like Esau. They think they can get back the birthright. They think, yeah, that they can beat this race. They can beat this game. Yeah? Why? According to what Isaac said, it shall come to pass when thou shalt have dominion that thou shalt break his yoke off your neck. So, is this the word of God? You figure out. Yeah. And how do we know that you can figure this out? By even getting deeper into the word of God and understanding, is this the word of man or is it the word of God? Though it comes from the word, though it comes from the man of God. This is where we need to discern Brothers and sisters in Christ, we will be so amazed. There's a lot of things, okay, when we don't really go deep into the Word of God, we are misled. We are greatly misled. Not every word from the Word of God, okay, that is posted on the internet shed by men of God is men of God. These are the last days, brothers and sisters in Christ. Awake from your slumber. Awake from your sleep. Because the Lord comes sooner than you expect. Thou shalt have dominion when thou shalt break his yoke of thy neck. So that's why Satan and his worshippers yeah, cling to this. Shall I be able to break his yoke over my neck? Brothers and sisters in Christ, okay, this is an illusion. This is something that is can't because it is already been said in Genesis 3, 16, 15 and 16. Now let's go there, alright? Let's go there. Just want to bring to remembrance what God said. And we know that, okay, this is the curse that God pronounced over Adam and Eve and over Satan. He says, I will put enmity between you and the woman, and between your seed and her seed. It shall bruise your head, but thou shalt bruise his heel. Never, never will the world of darkness overcome the world of light. Never will the world of Satan overcome the children of light. So here we see that this is a distortion yeah, of the word just because it is spoken by a patriarch, Isaac. Be discerning. Yeah. And we know that Isaac, sorry, yeah, Isaac, yeah has already lost his discernment. Yeah. And he begins even yeah, to give this uh, blessing over a song. But still he did not override what he said earlier. What he said earlier to Jacob, chapter 27, Verse 28, all right, the blessing over Jacob, yeah? 
Therefore God gave thee the dew of heaven, the fatness of the earth, and plenty of corn. And why? Let people serve thee, nations bow down before thee. Be Lord over thy brethren, and thy mother's son bow down to you. Cursed be everyone that curses thee. Blessed is anyone that blesses thee. Now, this is the birthright. Blessing. Alright? Curse is everyone that curses thee, and blessed is he that blesses thee. Right? We see this why? This was what was promised to Abraham. What was promised to Abraham comes down the family line. It shall not change. God's word stands forever. God's blessing stands forever. God's gift stands forever. It is irrecoverable. The gift of God is irrecoverable. What God says, He does. Now may I say this thing. When God says, all right, when you believe on the name of the Lord, you shall be saved. This is the word of God. This is His blessing. This is His promise. This is our birthright to those who believe on the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. You are a child of God. And when you are a child of God, you are promised the blessings of Abraham. More than that, you are blessed in the heavenly places in Christ Jesus. And you can find that in Ephesians chapter 1 verse 3. You are blessed in heavenly places in Christ Jesus. Brothers and sisters, our blessings here on earth yeah, is spiritual, right? And also physical. Our spiritual blessings are those, okay, that will bring us into eternal security and salvation with God. So, when God says, it is by grace that you are saved. Not by works. Understand that. There are people, Judaizers, they do not know they are Judaizers, yeah, will still emphasize on works and saying that works is the one that qualifies salvation. They mean well, yeah. Even as uh, the Pharisees, the Sadducees, they mean well. They want to protect God, all right. They want to protect God's laws, so they enact more laws. They add, they add to the law. They add to the promise. But clearly, we see. From book in the book of Genesis, chapter after chapter, we see the grace of God. And here we see that, okay, why was Isaac blessed? Because of Abraham. And why was Jacob blessed? Because of what? Because of the promise that God promised to Abraham. God promised to Isaac. And why are we today blessed? Because of what God promised. And His promise stands firm in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ. So let no one deceive you of your salvation. If you truly, truly read the Word of God, you shall see that salvation is yours forever. Over centuries, people are still fighting over this. They can't see the goodness of God. They can't see. Because we are short-sighted. We walk by sight and not by faith. 
We see the wrongs of people. God see the hearts of people. We see the mistakes of people. God see the hearts of people. We walk by sight, which we should not. We should walk by faith. Faith is the substance of things not seen, of things hoped for. I do hope we do see this this afternoon. One thing I also do believe, and I also give credit to Isaac, yeah, because he understands the heart of God. And when he blesses, yeah, he gives an even chance, even to Esau. So we saw that God gave the dew, the heaven, to Jacob. All right. So this cannot be changed. So what does Esau have? All right. So Isaac, his father, says to him, your dwelling place, all right, will be by the fatness of the earth, of the dew of heaven above. You can't change that. All right. You can't be the one, okay, that is receiving, but you will be the one that is still, yeah, in the blessings of the receiver. And he says that by your sword shall you live. Sounds familiar? Yeah. Ishmael? Yeah. God has prepared Esau. He was a skillful hunter. He will be able to fend for himself. God has prepared Esau for this day. Then he says that by the sword you shall live, but you shall serve your brother. Right? You can't cross the line. And it shall come to pass that when you shall have dominion, you shall break his yoke of his neck. So this is the part, all right, where um, it does not fall in line with the prophecy given by God to humankind. Because we know that later on, yeah, Esau will be the patriarch of the Edomites. Yeah, and that will uh, study another day. Yeah? So Esau hated Jacob because of the blessing wherein the father blessed him and Esau said in his heart, the days of mourning of my father are at hand, and will I slay my brother Jacob? Still, Esau hated Jacob. So as we have read in the Hebrews 12, yeah, he had bitterness in his heart because he did not receive the blessing. But rightly, Esau, you should hate Jacob because of the birthright, not the blessing. You have got it wrong, Esau. You are still in denial. You are only thinking of the things of the world. You are still despising your birthright. When will you come to your senses, Esau? He says that the days of my father's death are coming. And when my father dies, I will slay my brother Jacob. Years and years have passed, I believe. Bitterness in his heart grows. His heart grows cold. 42. And the words of Esau, the elder son, were told to Rebekah. Somehow, all right, the words... I believe Esau was grumbling and speaking to himself, talking to himself one day. One day when dad dies, when my father dies, okay, I'm going to kill okay, my brother, the one that stole my blessing. Hey Esau, you are the one who willingly sold your birthright. Come on, come to your senses. 
And these words of Esau, the elder son, were told to Rebekah, and she sent and called Jacob, her younger son, and said unto him, Behold, your brother Esau, espousing thee, does comfort himself, purposing to kill thee. You see, he comforts himself by saying, One day, one day, I will kill the one that stole my blessing. Bitterness in his heart. He comforts him with this hope. All right? The hope that does not come from God. He says that, I hope one day I will kill my brother Jacob. Vengeance was in his heart. So Rebecca hears this and he says to his son, Jacob, Now, therefore, my son, obey my voice, arise, flee you to Laban, my brother, to Haran, and tear with him a few days until thy brother's fury turn away. You see, the Bible says fury. He was furious. He was furious. And I, I understand because all the while we are thinking, all right, that we, the one that has been determined by culture, by determined by tradition, that the elder will receive the double portion. But not in God's economy, not in God's sight, not in God's will. God does according to what He wills because all that has breath belongs to Him. Even the firstborn belongs to Him. Even as we have seen, Ishmael, the firstborn, belongs to God. And God has a right okay, to do what He sees is right. Not what man sees is right. Not what tradition tells is right. Therefore, the Bible says, do not follow after the traditions of man, but follow the commandments, the voice of God. Traditions of man cripple. They enslave. They deceive. But the voice of God, the commandments of God, yeah, they free, they enlighten. Hearing and obeying the mother's voice, he says, Go, my son, to my brother's land in Haran. Stay with him for a few days until your brother's fury turn away. Until your brother's anger turn away from you and he forget that what you have done to him, then I will send and fetch you from there. Why should I be Christ also both in one day? A mother's heart. Yeah? Though one may be not that good and not that righteous, but still the love for the one is still there. He still, in a way, okay, has concern and love for Esau. And he knows that he has lost Esau. And he does not want to lose Jacob. Why should I be deprived also of you both in one day? The mother's heart was crushed. Prayers after prayers. Esau did not repent. Prayers after prayers. Esau still was in denial, thinking that he was Jacob. 
who swindled him, supplanted him of his birthright. Denial can cause us to lose our way. Denial can cause us to fall away from the plan of God. Bitterness in our heart will cause us to deny the things of God. Therefore, let not bitterness, malice be in your heart, the Bible says. It is a root of bitterness. It is a root of bitterness. And that root of bitterness must be removed. And we shall see in the next few chapters right, how this root of bitterness can be removed. Now, let me just finish until uh, 46, yeah? And we'll start with uh, 28 next week. Um, yeah, like I said, yeah, um, in the Bible, there's no chapter divisions. So we see that, okay, Rebecca said to Isaac, I'm weary of my life because of the daughters of Heth. If Jacob takes a wife of the daughters of Heth, such as this, which are of the daughters of the land, what good shall my life be to me? Rebecca remembers, yeah, the commandments of God given to Abraham. It was passed down to her. Yeah, all these godly commandments that we must not step over the line. Not for any. Not for any. Even some will also step over the line and say, it's okay for a Christian to marry a non-Christian. Yeah, perhaps pre-adventure, yeah, this person will also come to Christ. This is the teachings, not which we understand from the Word of God. So we should not put in man's understanding, man's experiences to the Word of God that says that it works. I've seen. So and so, he married this man, he married this girl who was not a Christian, and today, they are now attending church. Wow. Well, does attending church qualify him to be a son of God? There are people who attend church, but is their heart there? Or is their heart just to please the other partner? Never, never put our own understanding in the Word of God. So, Rebecca knows this is the Word of God. Do not go into okay, to the daughters of Canaan. And so we see that okay, in the next chapter, Isaac called Jacob, blessed him, charged him, said, You shall not take a wife from the daughters of Canaan. Okay, so we see that this is a continuation. So like I said, there's no chapter divisions. Yeah? So, uh, chapter divisions make it uh, easy for us to memorize and understand. Yeah. So we will uh, study this more in depth, okay? Yeah. So as such, okay, i like to take um, my leave right now. So I thank you for all that have come and listened intensely and believe uh, sometimes my words may be strong yeah but my heart yeah is for the sheep understand words of admonition comes with love the Bible says Paul says right that he writes in a letter he does not want to come face to face admonishing them in anger. Why are 
the epistles written. Are these epistles written by Paul? Charming? Soothing? These are all epistles, gospels of warning. The Bible is a book full of warnings. If we just look at the Bible and look for blessings, we are so misguided. So, so misguided. Alright? So, uh, let's just pray. Eh? Father, we thank you for this wonderful time that we have. Lord, I just pray that Lord, whatever's been said, Lord, let it be etched in our hearts, in our spirits, O oh God. Lord, let the traditions of men, the teachings of men, they are the ways of men that have interposed with our understanding of your word. O oh Lord, let it be removed completely, Lord, in the name of Jesus, O God. Lord, we humbly, yes, Lord, surrender our minds to you. Renew our minds, O God, that we may know you according to how you want us to know you, O God. O Lord, refresh, renew our hearts and our minds that we may see the true Christ that is written in this Bible, O God. Lord, we only want pure proof from you, God. Lord, we pray that, Lord, whatever things that we have learned that are not from you, whatever things that we are, that are learning right now that is not from you, Holy Spirit, come and speak and shout out in your spirit and awaken us, O Father. Awaken us that we may see our walk, whether the walk is with you or whether the walk with another. Lord, I thank you. I praise you for your wonderful words that you have shown to us, O God. Lord, I pray, help us this day to understand your word. Fill our hearts, Lord, not with bitterness. Yeah, when things go wrong, when we see famine, we complain. Even as the children of Israel, when they went through in the wilderness, when they saw that there was no delicious food, but there's only manna and daily manna that they were eating and they were complaining. Oh Lord, let us not be the complaining bunch of children of God. Help us, Father Lord, with complaint unnecessary, O God. Let us, Father Lord, be contented with what you've given to us, O God. Thank you, Lord, for the blessings, okay, that are physical and spiritual, O God. Lord, we want the spiritual blessings more than the physical blessings, Lord. Lord, if the physical blessings does overtake the spiritual blessings, Father, then, Lord, we choose the spiritual blessings, O God. Lord, let us not remain true to you, God. Let us be remain true to your faith, to your word, and to your calling, Lord. We ask all this in Jesus' precious name. Amen.